According to data from BlackRock, some yields are seeing levels that they haven't seen since the financial crisis, and the aggressive rate hikes set by the Federal Reserve have unlocked a new generational opportunity. Now, this includes in yields and in the bond ETF space. Our next guest is finding that there is growing adoption of bond ETFs in the current market climate. As part of our ETF report brought to you by Invesco QQQ, let's bring in BlackRock Global Co-Head of iShares Fixed Income ETFs, Steve Lapley, to discuss more. Thank you for joining us this morning, Steve. So I want to first talk about this, this generational opportunity, considering where we were during the financial crisis and really how much more upside you see ahead. Well, it is, it is pretty remarkable to, to think back over the last 10, 15 years. If you look at where we were on 10 years um, during, uh, during 2020, uh, compared to now, we were at below 50 basis points. Now we're above 450 basis points. So that is a massive shift. Um, the front end of the curve, even more so with, uh, with the Federal Reserve um, tightening policy aggressively here. Um, so what, what that means is that investors are able to completely retool their portfolios um, in ways that, that simply weren't available before. Um, we've been able to look at, you know, taking risk off the table with equities and adding back in um, fixed income risk, which, if, you know, again, if you go um, back even three or four years, you can get more at the front end of the treasury curve than you could in high yield um, at the end of 2020. So that's quite remarkable. And it just provides investors with um, degrees of freedom that they didn't have before. Yeah, it does feel like bonds are back in fashion, right? Which is sort of a kind of a funny thing to say here. But given the yields that we have seen, um, to your point, sort of on the short end as well as on the 10-year, um, we've seen a lot more interest move in that direction. Is your expectation that these yields will remain pretty elevated for longer? Well, that's what the Fed is telling us, and they keep reinforcing that message over and over, and they've been very aggressive about reinforcing it. So I think that, um, you know, the data is supporting them um, up to this point. We've had stronger data than expected. Um, there's a lot of discussion about the dot plots moving up. Um, but, you know, there's also discussion about uh, the role that the deficit's playing here and then investors reassessing the overall term premium in the market for longer term bonds because of the deficit. So there's a lot of cross currents going on here. But I do think, you know, we are unlikely to go to go back to the levels that, that we saw a few years ago. Now, there, there will be give and take, especially if we have a slowdown in the economy. You could see a retrace, retracement at the long end of the curve, which, you know, I think that speaks to some of the flows we're seeing, um, despite uh, the backup in yields, especially at the long end that we've seen um, recently. Um, we still continue to get flows in the in the longer end of the Treasury curve. So TLT our 20 plus treasury fund um, is still sort of the king of flows this year at, at 16 billion. Uh, we've taken in 40 billion overall into treasuries and that's spread pretty much around the curve, but it is interesting to see those flows still coming into the long end of the curve. And when you look at the makeup of who's investing here, what are you seeing in terms of institutional investors versus retail investors? It's a healthy mix of both. I, I do think that there was quite a sea change uh, during, uh, during the COVID volatility, the worst of it. Um, during February and March of 2020, we saw institutional investors who, you know, had been using bond ETFs um, to a limited degree. But I think during that uh, period of volatility, when even treasuries were dislocated, we saw um, quite a lot of assets come off the sidelines from institutional investors into bond ETFs um, simply out of necessity. They were managing risk, navigating that market. When the market pivoted back to risk on, um, it was much easier to leg back into the market through bond ETFs than it was the underlying, um, just like it was much easier to sell when, when uh, things were, were risk off at the beginning of, of, uh, of the onset of COVID. So I think now, as we stand here today, you know, we have, um, I think, nine of the 10 largest global asset managers are now users of bond ETFs, something like six or seven of the largest insurance companies now use bond ETFs. So it's been quite uh, a sea change of adoption over the last few years. Um, retail investors continue to discover, um, you know, I think the power of this tool in leveling the playing field for bonds is much easier for them to access bonds with bond ETFs than it is individual bonds, and they continue to allocate uh, based on that. So how do you think uh, investors should be putting their money in the space, money to use in this space? I mean, what are you advising your clients in this environment? Yeah, and this, this gets down to investor preference, as you might imagine. Um, so, 
you know, right now, um, I do think that we, um, you know, prefer to stay sort of short and intermediate in high quality fixed income. Um, that being said, it is very, very hard to time uh, the top in rates. And so what we have um, seen investors do, again, just by virtue of the flows into something like TLT, investors are layering in longer term bonds um, almost as an insurance policy, if you will, um, against, you know, a potential slowdown in the economy. That's been talked about for months and months. Um, we'll see um, if and when it arrives. But we, we have seen investors sort of moving out on the longer end of the curve. The value is at the front end, but, but you know, we, we've seen that healthy mix. Um, I do think we prefer higher quality. Um, it is tricky in high yield right now um, with, you know, the, um, you know, the, the slowdown being talked about. You, it's very tough to call a credit cycle if, if and when it does happen. So we like higher quality, staying sort of short, uh, intermediate on the curve. Well, I appreciate you joining us this morning with your insights. A big thank you there to BlackRock Global co-head of iShares Fixed Income ETFs, Steve Lapley. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.